Hi guys. <laughs> Welcome back to another episode of What the Smart Book Reviews. Are you guys getting tired of that yet? Probably. Yeah. Yeah. Um, hi. Um, welcome back to another episode. Uh, my name is Candace and I'm your host. Thank you so much for joining me for another terrible, just, I'm just terrible at this. I, I don't know why you guys are here, honestly. Um, in today's video, we are going to be reviewing and I'm gonna, I'm gonna be super like animated in this one because this is if you know, you know. In today's video, we will be reviewing this book. Well, half of this book. Does that make sense? I don't know. This is a compilation uh, between authors Cressley Cole and Gina Showalter. There are technically two stories in here. The one we will be reviewing today is uh, the book by Cressley Cole, which is part of her uh, Immortals After Dark series. And, okay, if you watch my videos and you've watched my other videos in this series, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, Candace, you done fucked up. And yes, I done fucked up. Because according to Amazon, this is book eight in the series. And I think, if I'm not mistaken, I may have reviewed books that came after this. I may have already done the videos for those, for like one or two of them. Are you surprised? I mean, <laughs> honestly. Um, so yeah, so if you've watched my previous videos, you were probably like, oh, she forgot this one. I didn't forget. I did, I mean, I did forget but I remembered better late than never. Right. Right. So here we are right now. I'm going to, I'm doing my best. <laughs> I'm doing most. Um, so yeah. So the name of this book is called deep kiss of winter. I don't know if there's a different title for each of the stories because Cressley has an IAD story in here, which is Daniela and Murdoch's story. And then Gina has, I think, one of her alien, alien huntress novels, I think, has a novella in here. But I don't know if it just says Deep Kiss of Winter. So I don't, I'm not sure if each story has its own title and this is just like the compilation title or if that's it. That's all there is. I, I don't know. Um, the internet would probably tell me if I did any amount of research for any of these videos, but I don't. <laughs> so... <laughs> Go figure. Um, so yeah. So in today's video, we will be reviewing uh, the Cressley Cole story from this compilation book. Um, and like I said, it is uh, right. it is Daniela and Murdoch's story. So if you're familiar with Cressley's Immortals After Dark series, uh, you 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 know why. I am the way I am when I review these books because they are literally everything to me. Like that series is probably, I love you, Gina. Like I really do. I really do love you. But the IAD series is my favorite of all time. Paranormal romance series of all time ever. Um, I've read all of the books at least two, three times, at least three, like three times a piece, I would say. And some more than that. Like some of the ones that I was like obsessed with, I probably read more than two or three times. Uh, in different formats, paperback, hardcover. I recently gave away a hardcover edition of this actual book. Um, audio. Uh, what's the name of the guy who does the audio for Cressley's? Um, Petkoff something Robert Petkoff if you don't if you don't do audio because the narrator is terrible sometimes Robert Petkoff he does a good fucking job narrating this series um 
So, babble, 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 five minutes in, blah, blah, blah. Um, this book has 444 pages, and I'm going to assume that that's total because I think the Cressley... Oh, no, you know what? Mm, it does have its own title, and it's literally right here in the fucking book, and I'm staring it in the face. So, the name of this particular story is called Untouchable. Okay. Candace, if you did even an iota of research, you would not make a fool of yourself, but... Mm. Okay, so the, the, the story for Gina's novella that's in here is called Tempt Me Eternally. So that's not the one we're talking about today, though. Um, 300 pages for the Cressley one, at least in this size book. Okay, you can currently get this book for your Kindle or Nook for the price of $7.99. You can get the mass market paperback for $9.99, brand new on Amazon. You can get the hardcover for $15.27 on Amazon. It's an odd number. Uh, and you can find this book in varying conditions of used on eBay for starting at around $5 with free shipping. So it's really just whatever floats your boat. You know what I mean? Um, I have, I think, pretty much every type of, like, I have a hardcover, I have a paperback, and I have the digital and the audio. <laughs> I didn't put the price of the audio on here because I never do. If that's something that you guys would like for me to start doing, like telling you how much it costs with like Audible or whatever, I find prices for the audio versions, if you don't have an Audible membership, to be ridiculously high. Um, and I don't know if that's just because I'm not reading them properly or there's some unknown secret to this realm of Audible that I don't know. And that's why it's like that. But like I'll see an audio book and if you don't have audible and you just want to buy that one book it's like 25 dollars for the audio why you're literally reproducing the same track over and over one digital track like mp3 whatever that you're then to the masses and i gotta pay 25 dollars mm. again in my last video i talked about this if there's some hidden thing behind the scenes going on that justifies why that is that I don't know. Let me know if you know, because I don't know. <laughs> Story of my life, I don't know. Um, so I will read you guys the blurb for this and then we can discuss because I get super aggro in any IAD review and this one will not be any different. <laughs> so brace yourself because it's coming. Um, so the blurb that I snippet thing that I took from Amazon, which I don't know, uh, I think it's pretty much exactly the same as the back cover of the book. So it says, Cressley Cole delivers a breathtaking tale of a brutal vampire soldier about to know love for the first time and a Valkyrie aching to be touched. Murdoch Roth will stop at nothing to claim Daniela the Ice Maiden, the delicate Valkyrie who makes his heart beat for the first time in 300 years. Yet the exquisite Danny is part ice fay, and her freezing skin can't be touched by anyone but her own kind without inflicting pain beyond measure. Soon, desperate for closeness, in an agony of frustration, Murdoch and Danny will do anything to have each other. Together, can they find the key that will finally allow them to slake the overwhelming desire burning between them? Okay. Okay, where should we begin? Murdoch is the main male character for this, or the hero, if you will. Um, he is a vampire. He is a turned vampire. And more specifically, he is a member of what Cressley has created in this realm known as the Forebearers. Forebearers are a faction of vampires who don't drink blood directly from the flesh. They are very ignorant to all things lore because other creatures like other natural creatures in the lore which is the realm of supernatural beings in this in these books um other creatures in the lore look down on the forebearers because they were once human they're turned humans right um 
so they will not discuss or reveal secrets of the lore to the forebearers. So the forebearers are virtually ignorant on almost everything that has to do with the lore, including their own kind. Uh, the forebears are led by a guy named Kristoff. He is the rightful heir to the Horde throne, or like the Horde is the whole vampire, like the whole vampireness, you know? Um, he is their rightful king, but he was usurped. Uh, he was whisked away as a baby and raised by humans uh, to save his life. Uh, when his crown was taken by his uncle, Demestru. Um, fast forward, he's now created his own army of turned vampires where he went out onto battlefields and uh, basically gave dying mortal warriors the option of uh, swear fealty to me, always be my boy, and I will turn you and you will live. If not, you can just lay here in a puddle of your own stink and just die. And um, that's what he did. So he amassed a large army doing that. Um, Murdoch, his brothers Nikolai, Conrad, and Sebastian um, are, were all turned. Um, Nikolai and Murdoch were turned voluntarily. They did it voluntarily with Kristoff. Um, Sebastian and Conrad were subsequently turned by Nikolai and Murdoch against their will. Um, they have their own books, which uh, both have already been reviewed by me even though I think they should have come after this one. <laughs> but again, it is what it is. So, um, since the time that him and Nikolai were turned, they have served Kristoff uh, in multiple wars and whatever, 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 right? Um, he's never had a reason to defy Kristoff in any way. Um, he does it because, like, he, he serves him because he made a vow, but he doesn't really have any legit, like, loyalty to Kristoff, as opposed to his brother Nikolai, who is the general of Kristoff's uh, army and, like, actually believes in the cause. Murdoch is just kind of there. He's like, whatever. He, in his mortal life, he was... N like the notorious playboy of the brothers. He was, um, when he wasn't on the battlefield, like kicking ass and taking names, he was in bed with bitches. And uh, he had like a reputation for being like an insatiable lover, you know what I'm saying? Like a Casanova type situation. Um, so yeah, so that's basically Murdoch's story. Fast forward to uh, present day New Orleans and Nikolai has teamed up with uh, Mist the Coveted and they're an item now. And through Mist or through that situation, Murdoch has been introduced to uh, or been able to become in contact with Daniela. Daniela is the female main character for this book. She is half Valkyrie and half Ice Fae. Um, so she's like an Ice Maiden. She they call that's what they call her, Danielle the Ice Maiden. So essentially, uh, she, she has all the Valkyrie traits that the other Valkyries in the books have, like you know, super speed and burp, 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 all that jazz. Um, she takes nourishment from uh, like lightning and electricity. She doesn't eat. She doesn't drink. She has no bodily fluids. She's no, you know what I'm saying? Like, none of that. Um, the Ice Fay part of her makes her different from all of her other sisters. Uh, she is the only Ice Fay Valkyrie in their coven or in, in really any of the covens that she knows of. Um, her Ice Fay part of her DNA makes it so that her skin is essentially untouchable. If she reaches above a certain temperature, uh, she can do what's called like, she'll, she'll basically like shatter like glass. Um, so she has to stay cold all the time. Like her room in the coven house is like an ice box and she 
thrives in like sub-zero type temperatures like ice baths and snow and like that's her jam so if a person of a regular body temperature touches her in any way she it basically like burns her she gets like severe excruciating pain so the book opens with uh daniela basically trolling the streets for some trouble like she's looking for you know she's looking to get into some stuff and uh she realizes that she's being chased by um members of the Aesir. Aesir is the kingdom that Daniela's family or her lineage originates from. Um it's a hidden kingdom that is supposedly like all ice and then covered in like a bubble of it's like hidden it's like a hidden realm of ice. Um, Daniela's mother, Svana, was the queen of the Aesir. She was murdered. Uh, well, her crown was taken first, and then her and Danny went on the run. And she left Danny to go attempt to reclaim her throne. And she was killed before she could even make it to... Um, I see her, I guess. The, is that the name of the, is that the name of the city? Or is that the name of the people? I, I don't know. I can't remember. But anyway, um, so she was killed. So Danny was then uh, raised like haphazardly, whatever. She made a vow to her mother that if her mother did not make it back from this mission, that she would never, uh, never seek out the Aesir to try and reclaim the throne. Uh, that's like a vague memory she has from like her childhood from when her mom left because now she's like eons years older like this happened like way way back in the day so yeah so modern day new orleans uh danny is now being chased by um several members of the ice here uh, they're basically like assassins who have been sent to kill her because the uh King, the king who took Svana's crown thinks that at some point Danny will come to take the crown back. And so she has a target on her back, essentially. So she's been in hiding, kind of hiding, like moving from place to place. She's now settled in New Orleans because she thinks that's the last place they're going to look for me is someplace where it's like uber hot all the time and sweaty and whatever. Um, long story short, they found her. She's on the, she's running. Uh, she catches the eye of Murdoch, who is out looking for, uh, Mist with Nikolai. This book takes place parallel in timeline to several of the other books. So, uh, Nikolai's book, Conrad's book, Sebastian's book, all four brothers, their books are happening simultaneously. So, honestly, you could probably read them in a different order than what's intended and you wouldn't be too lost, but don't do that because just don't. <laughs> my, my OCD is just, just don't, okay? Um, but yeah, so uh, Nikolai is out searching for Mist because basically she like, she blooded him and then she like cock teased him a little bit and now he's been on the precipice of like madness because he can't release, release uh without her touching him in some way so for five years he's been like insatiable blue balls for you know so he's out in new orleans he's heard there's a coven of valkyries here he's looking for her murdoch is helping him they split up murdoch is now seeing daniela and he's like oh my god it's gor she's gorgeous like what's what's good what's up and he sees that she's being chased by something or that she's running from something. So he follows and he ends up kind of breaking into the fight that's happening between her and the Aesir assassins. And uh, he basically saves her life. She's shot by an arrow that causes internal body heat to rise. So like it's, it's like a poison for her almost. So he basically saves her and he whisks her away to some place and nurses her back to health. And then they start this like tit for tat type, you know, because she has a thing for him. And in the midst of this fight, 
before he saves her life or during the fight that where he saves her life, um, she bloods him, meaning that she is his bride. So if you know anything about vampires uh, in a lot of supernatural or, or paranormal romance novels, they stick with the, the theme of a vampire has a faded bride, which is that their person. And uh, when they find their bride, they will then, their body will basically come to life again. So prior to their, their blooding, they, they have no heartbeat, their lungs don't breathe, you can't, they don't get boners for anyone. Like it, they're just dead. They're literally dead inside. Um, they find their bride. They get blooded. Immediate erection. Um, their heart beats and their lungs start working and they can breathe and yada, yada, yada. Okay. Right. Um, they can't release for the first time. They can't release. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Um, for the first time without the assistance of their bride. After that first initial release, they can then leave their bride if they wanted to. But then why would you want to? Because that's your person. You know what I mean? And like, unless you're like uber anti commit, like commitment phobe type person, like, you know, why would you want to leave your bride? Like that's your boo. And if it's a Valkyrie, you know they're going to be hot. Like, Valkyries, in this realm, all the Valkyries are, like, gorgeous. So, um, Daniela bloods him. He's eternally frustrated because he comes to find out, you're my bride, and I need to get off, but I can't touch you, and you can't touch me, or you'll be in excruciating pain. How am I supposed to get this out? Like... So, uh, she helps him with that first initial release to the day, the pair of, like her, her hand gets all blistery and stuff. And, you know, I think you know what I'm saying. And, uh, but then from that point on, they start a relationship that is where they're, they're kind of trying to find ways around this problem. This, I can't have intercourse with you problem, um, to get them both off but it's like a hollow type release because you know they want to they want to do the do you know um so frustrations mount and over the course of this period of time Daniela begins to have um like getting more snippets of that conversation she had with her mother from childhood um and she realizes that she's just been replaying like a tiny portion of that conversation to herself where she said where her mother actually said was don't go looking for the crown or looking for the eye seer until you're shown the way and Danny asked her how will I find the way and she does I think Svana says something to the extent of like you already know it's in you you just it the time is not right so wait for the right time. So during this period of time where she's like absconded with Murdoch in some like Siberian cabin where everything is literally covered in snow and ice, um, she starts getting these flashes of like symbols that are essentially like uh, ways to create a portal to the ice here. Okay, so um, yeah. Like, do I, should I spoil the ending for you? I mean, it's a, this is a paranormal romance novel that does have a happily ever after. All of Cressley's books have HEAs. Otherwise, they would not be my favorite books. And I would throw them in the garbage because I can't read a romance novel that doesn't have a happily ever after. It's just my thing. I can't. Um, so, yeah. So it does have a happily ever after. Eventually, they do find a way that they can touch each other. And um, Murdoch does get like a little slap on the wrist when he eventually feeds from Danny. And he's not supposed to because, you know, forebears don't. That's a no-no. Um, and yeah. So uh, she does eventually go to um, the kingdom where... The king has already been killed by someone else. <laughs> and 
Uh, they want her to take her place there, but she's miserable without Murdoch, and Murdoch's alternately he over here miserable without her, and he braves the the wilderness of the icier lands to get in there to win her back, and it's just so. It just it's just so you know, you know, um. So yeah. So that's pretty much the gist of this book, you guys. Uh, I feel like my last review was just ridiculously garbled. And this one has been pretty decently explained. Which is no surprise because this series that I've read a bajillion times is so near and dear to my heart that how could I fuck this up? <laughs> anyway. Um, for the rating for the book, I gave it a nine and a half, a 9.5, you guys, which I know is like, whoa. Um, I don't remember if I rated Conrad. Okay, so Conrad and Naomi's story, which I think is called Dark Needs at Night's Edge or something like that. Um, that is probably one of my favorites from the series. I don't remember if I rated it a nine and a half or if I give it a nine, but if I did give it a nine, I'm retracting that and I'm give I'm going to give it a nine and a half too, because <laughs> I, I screwed you, Conrad. I'm so sorry. Um, but yeah, this entire series is so binge worthy. There are currently like 17, 18 books in the series. So if you're looking for a paranormal romance series that already has a lot of books that have been published for it that you can literally just sit down and binge back to back to back to back to back to back, to back books, this is the one. If you're looking for um, something that has a smattering of all different kinds of creatures that get together together, there's, there's no like... Um, clear boundaries where it's like oh only vampires can be with vampires and only uh you know werewolves can only be with werewolves like no they they're all they're they're just together you know what I mean like Cressley doesn't give a shit she's like oh you want to be this vampire you want to be with you want to be with that werewolf go for it go for it. I, I love that I love that like I don't mind books that where it's like, okay, if I want to be with someone, if I want to take a mate and I want to produce offspring or procreate or have kids, it has to be a mate of my same species. I don't mind books like that, but I love the idea of like a vampire and a werewolf getting together and then having a baby that's like both. Right? And there's so many different types of characters in or creatures in Cressley's IAD realm like for example Naomi who is uh Conrad's bride is she was human she was murdered she turned into a ghost she then fell in love with Conrad and had to find a witch found a witch who would basically bring her back to life so then she went to back to being human and then turned into a phantom which I've read very few books if any I can't even remember if I've ever read another book another paranormal romance novel that featured a phantom as a main character but I I've loved it I love that um Sweet Ruin is another one in this series that I haven't gotten up to reviewing yet but that I've read a bajillion times and that is one of my absolute favorite favorite books um Regan's book is like another one like Regan and Declan are just I can't I can't and that one is actually coming up like within the next like two or three books so 35 minutes in um yeah so I would highly recommend don't don't even bother like unless you're an exclusive e-reader don't even bother buying the digital download just buy the book you're gonna want to own it you're gonna want to own all of them that is how much I stand behind this series um so yeah that's it uh if you like me and you like my channel please consider subscribing I would really appreciate it uh if you do subscribe 
make sure you hit that little bell so you get notifications when I upload a new video. You can also keep up with new video uh, updates and giveaways and trash talk <laughs> and stupid memes and things like that by joining my members only Facebook group, uh, following me on Instagram or Twitter. I will link all of them down in the description box below and I'll put a little banner here on the screen for you guys to see. Um, and yeah, I think that's it. I think I'm done. 30 minutes and I should be done because y'all don't want to fucking hear me ramble for 30 minutes. Um, I love you guys so much. I thank you so much for joining me for this video. I thank you so much for watching. If you are a repeat viewer, I love you so much. You don't even know. Um, and I will see you guys in my next video. Okay. I love you. Bye. I can't tell if I'm straight or not, but, uh, fuck it. Where am I at? Okay. Murdoch Roth will stop at nothing. Roth. Roth. Why did I do that? Jodian is the one that, Jodian? Yeah. No. King, the fuck was his name? Anyway. Deflation. That one wasn't terrible. My last review was trash. Like, if you watch all my videos religiously, which I know very few of you do, you will know that my last video was not good. I was distracted at like every eight seconds. Um, I had to stop the video multiple times. So satisfying. Uh, multiple times because Charlotte was just bothering me so much and Freckles was making a lot of noise and yeah so um I don't know I don't know I don't know what's wrong with me like my brain is so bad and I can't I can't there's no there's no cohesion. Cohesion? Is that a word? Cohesiveness? Is that that's a word? There's no... Fuck, I don't even know. I don't know. I'm going to do another giveaway soon, you guys. I would love to know what you guys would... Which books would you like for me to give away in my next giveaway? I have... As if this video isn't long enough, I'm going to go ahead and make it even longer by showing you guys. I have a lot, like several Nora Roberts books. Uh, this is obviously a large paperback, but I have this one. I have this one, also a large paperback. I have this one that's hardcover. <laughs> I just scared the shit out of her. <laughs> Revenge is sweet because you're always drinking during my damn videos. Um... I also have two copies of The Glass Queen by Gina Show Walter in hardcover. This is a young adult novel, but there is shit, so it fits. It fits, okay? Um, sorry, my camera's going to shake for a second while I put these back. And then I have some other uh, smaller, like, mass market paperbacks. I have this one by Christine Feehan. I have The Witness by Nora Roberts. I have Lori Foster. I have Joanna Lindsay. And I have this one by Susan Mallory called Sisters by Choice, which I haven't read anything by Susan Mallory in a hot minute. I need to get on that because I remember liking her. I just haven't read any of her stuff in a while. My to be read list is ridiculous. Um, so yeah. So let me know. Comment down below if you have a preference. Um, post post on Instagram. Post on. I think I posted these on Instagram a while ago, just to see what everybody would pick. And I think I got like one or two responses. <laughs> so depending on if you're the only one who says anything, maybe you'll get your wish. <laughs> um, I'm gonna go eat dinner with my family. And uh, 
try and record some more tomorrow because today was just shit. <laughs> so I love you guys so much and I'll see you later. Have a good night.